Hi, Gary Stearman. It is July 27th, and today I'm going to take a few moments and comment on something everybody's been talking about. James Holmes, the crazed gunman who entered uh, a midnight showing of Batman at a theater in Aurora, Colorado. I don't have to tell you what happened. It's been all over the news. Uh, it's beginning to fade into the background, but today I wanted to speak a little bit about this uh, in terms of what the Bible has to say about behavior like this in the latter days. Uh, James Holmes, uh, of course, was taken a a immediately to uh, the police station. He's been booked uh, when, when appearing in public uh, with his weirdly dyed red hair. Uh, he's looking dazed. He's looking bug-eyed. Sometimes he looks like he doesn't know where he is. And people are trying to guess now what prompted him to do this? And, of course, we have the gun control argument. Uh, did his uh, passion for guns make him do it? Uh, what made him do it? Was he really insane? Uh, his actions are truly bizarre. His behavior is strange. Uh, his orange dyed hair gives him the look of someone who is, hmm, not quite all there. And yet there are a lot of people who are saying that uh, he's either a psychotic or he is a manic, and uh, that's a, a little bit different from psychosis. Uh, manic behavior uh, can result from not sleeping for several days and speeding yourself up to the point that you are no longer in control of yourself. Could be psychotic, psychopathic, could be manic. Uh, he could be faking it. It's possible, says one uh, psychiatrist who has looked at him, uh, that uh, he's faking it all. But, she said, after investigating him, we'll just have to wait and see because we really don't know right now. The fact is that uh, a bright, bright graduate student studying uh, uh, in, in graduate school, uh, a, uh, a, a, a course that would take him into essentially the neurological behavior of human beings, and I find that kind of interesting that he was studying neurology, uh, at some point had a break. He dyed his hair red and, he's, and he roared in and said, I'm the Joker. He presented himself at The Dark Knight Rises as the Joker. Well, the thought came to me, who is this guy, the Joker? And uh, I'm looking here at a few notes. In the spring of 1940, cartoonist Bob Kane invented the character known as the Joker. Now, uh, from the very beginning, the Joker was a master criminal, uh, Batman's nemesis, who wants to destroy Batman in, 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 in any way that he possibly can. And he's always billed as a, an intelligent psychopath. He's got a warped, sadistic sense of humor, of course, that evil cackle. Uh, the Joker has been played down through the years by everybody from Cesar Romero and Jack Nicholson uh, all the way up to Heath Ledger uh, in uh, The Dark Knight. That was a, one of the Batman films. And uh, Heath Ledger played this psychopath so realistically that a lot of people said that it actually drove him into a depressed state uh, from which he did not recover. He overdosed on drugs and died. Uh, did Heath Ledger die? Uh, of uh, some kind of a, a uh, Joker-induced uh, psychosis, or was it a simple overdose of drugs? Was he depressed from having played the part of the Joker? We'll probably never know. But the one thing that strikes me is that we have here a psychopath who, who has caught the attention of the world. Uh, the Joker, created in 1940 as a kind of a, a loony, uh, crazy psychopath has over the decades gotten to be a darker and darker and darker figure uh, until finally, as I said a moment ago, Heath Ledger played him as someone who was uh, really, really frightening. Uh, Peter Bogdanovich, who, by the way, uh, is not speaking from a spiritual point of view, uh, was talking about the movies. Now, Peter Bogdanovich, uh, of course, he's famous for The Last Picture Show. He's famous for uh, a, a number of uh, famous films. In, ti in, ti in fact, one of them is called Targets. You may remember that one came out. And it was uh, a kind of a dark and violent film. 
But Peter Bogdanovich uh, says this. When somebody asked him, do you think the movies are causing sociopathic behavior? He said, uh, Targets was meant to be a cautionary fable. It was a way of saying uh, there was a Bor Boris Karloff kind of violence, uh, the Victorian violence of the past. It wasn't the scary kind of random violence that we associate with a sniper or with what happened last weekend. And of course, he was talking about James Holmes. At first, some of the people uh, at the Dark Knight Rises, he says, thought that the shooting was part of the movie. He says, that's very telling. In fact, it was very telling to me, too, that the, the people present didn't know, uh, in fact, whether the shooting was uh, a, a madman or meant to be part of what was being shown on the screen. And then Peter Bogdanovich says this, violence on the screen has increased tenfold. It's almost pornographic, he says. In fact, thinking about it a little longer, he said it is pornographic. And then he says video games are violent too. It's all out of control. I can see uh, where it would drive somebody crazy. Now here is a movie maker talking about the movies. This is a far cry from what you've been hearing debated on television. And of course, on television, guns are being blamed. Uh, the availability of assault rifles being blamed. This is absolute uh, poppycock. It, it, it is ridiculous to think that, that guns drove James Holmes to do what he did. In fact, he was driven there on a very spiritual level, uh, a kind of a worship of a Batman, Dark Knight Rises culture, of a, uh, of a Joker culture. Uh, when he went into the, the theater that night, he said, I'm the Joker. Uh, apparently he shouted those words. What did he mean by that? Well, what I think he meant by it was, I have become what the Joker represents in the movies. Uh, and that's a very, very dark thought indeed. Chapter uh, 3 of Second Timothy says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Of course, we've all read those verses. And what I, would want to, what I would want to remind you of at this time is that that word perilous in perilous times is the Greek word chalepas. And chalepas means essentially raging insanity. Uh, we find that word used in Matthew 8, 28, uh, where Jesus met a demon-possessed man. And he said, and when he was come to the other side of the, of, into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Uh, and the term here, exceedingly fierce, is the same Greek word uh, as translated in uh, 2 Timothy as perilous times. Only here it's translated as exceedingly fierce. And she used to describe ragingly insane human beings. Well, what's being said in the Bible very clearly is in the last days there will come raging insanity. My friends, we have seen it. These are the days. Keep looking up. <laughs>